Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy, and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health one topic at a time. So today I have this crazy and simple and really effective trick to address that issue that I keep talking about in all of my videos about leaking around a mask. You know, I keep saying that a mask, the filter inside a mask is only as good as, you know, however, whatever proportion of the air you take in or you know, let out is actually going through the filter as opposed to going around the filter. Now, um, before I get to that, I do want to say thank you so much. I got so many um, questions and a lot of discussion about these masks, which is totally ongoing. And I am planning to do um, more reviews of products. Um, I look at every single one of the suggestions that you guys send and I do evaluate them. I do have to get some questions answered and they have to like sort of meet certain criteria on paper before I'll actually go out and buy them in order to review. Um, some of you already know I don't do any affiliate links on my channel because I want my reviews to be unbiased. So um, I'm real picky about what I, I will buy, but I look at every single one of them. Um, I'm also going to be doing an update very soon um, with some questions and answers and some news on masks that I've already reviewed, including the Sono mask, the Space mask, and the Starks mask. There's some new styling coming out, and there were some questions that, um, that I had and you guys had, and I'm going to answer those shortly. Um, but onto this issue of masks leaking. So I felt like I was the only person, I think I said that short of finding one little citation that I read here on my channel aloud from the CDC website, and that was dealing with N95 respirators specifically, I, I thought I was like the only person talking about this issue of mask fit and um, the fact that you know, unless a mask is really sealed down, there's, you know, different masks have different proportions of leakage. And I, I theorized that um, the smaller the particle size it's meant to filter, the more resistance the mask is actually offering and the more the path of least resistance is around the mask. Um, turns out I'm not the first person to get there. <laughs> it's not a medical issue, so it wasn't in the medical literature, but guess what? It's an engineering issue. And there is a very quick, simple technique that was developed by engineers, and I've seen citations back as far as 1983 on this. Um, and it's a little bit crazy, so I guess that's gonna make me the first person to do something that seems a little silly and crazy here on YouTube, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway. Um, yeah, so even as back as far as 1983, there was a nuclear incident, for those of you who are old enough to remember, like me, on Three Mile Island, and they were trying to deal with, you know, what kind of face coverings and how to keep face coverings um, close to the face so they could actually filter things that were dangerous for people to breathe in while they were cleaning that up. Um, and lo and behold, um, just in the beginning of the COVID pandemic, Northeastern University's engineering department decided to start conducting studies using this same technique. Um, now, what they did is they used a surgical mask as a standard, and then they were looking at all different kinds of homemade masks, which varied greatly. And you might recall at the beginning of this pandemic, there weren't all these manufacturers making masks like there are now. So people were using homemade face coverings. And what they found is um, they said that the surgical mask was still 75% effective at filtering out tiny little small particles. And they were looking at particles, they were, they were using nanometers, not micron size. So they said between 20 and 1,000 nanometers, what they were looking at. Um, <clears throat> to give it some perspective, COVID is between 60 and 140. Okay, so that's well within the range of what they were testing. And they said that the surgical mask still tested, still filtered out about 75% of small particles when just worn normally, okay? And I think I had said for influenza, I said this on a previous video, about 60%. So anywhere between 60 and 80, they came up with 75. And then they um, tested before and after with this technique. And then they did the same thing with um, various homemade face coverings. And what they found is that universally, um, this trick that I'm about to show you increased, um, it, it, it increased the efficiency of the mask, um, meaning it decreased the leakage by anywhere from 15 to 50%. And it actually brought this plain old surgical mask um, within reach of an N95, okay? So um, here it is. Like I said, it's a little crazy. I never thought I'd see myself doing something like this or upload on YouTube, but I'm just gonna put on my regular surgical mask. Now, what this trick involves is buying a pair of pantyhose, nylons, okay? The Researchers in this study recommended queen size. I think that's like an average size person would use that. Uh, I actually find it a little bit big, so I don't know if I'll cut out a different section of them or if I'll try a different size. But what you do is you take the pantyhose out of the package, you cut out a tube. So like starting with the thigh, um, you cut out a tube about eight to 10 inches long and it looks about like this. And yes, it's very stretchy. And as a matter of fact, there it is around my neck. So, um, 
they found that when you add a piece of nylon to this surgical mask, which only filters out between 60 and 80% of tiny particles, 75 in their study, it brought it to 90. Okay, well, an N95 respirator, which is sealed down to your face and pretty impractical to use on a daily basis all day, um, is only 95%. So it looks like this. Now, I did want to make sure it, ex it goes beyond the periphery of the mask everywhere, including at the bottom. I'm going to try to, of course, now that I'm on camera, I can't get this thing wrestled there. Um, and what this does is it holds the mask down in these areas so that it's, you know, you've actually got kind of a seal near your face, um, kind of like tape, except it's, it really doesn't tend to move. Move your head around now. I don't think I'm going to go out anytime too soon um, to a 7-Eleven or a bank sporting this getup. <laughs> but, you know, I was amazed to read about something that seems such like such common sense and so quick and so easy. So for those of you um, who are watching my reviews, I am continuing to review masks. I am continuing um, to look at this issue with fit, leakage, um, how we might address it. I'm not inclined to recommend that anybody wear a respirator all day or something with like a silicone seal, which is um, very hot or something that's sealed like an N95. I just think those are really impractical. And I keep saying that I think the best um, solution to all of our problems is if you, you know, if you find yourself in a place where everybody's wearing masks, so many of these issues go away. But, you know, as they come out and talk more and more about aerosolized particles in certain areas, um, in, in certain circumstances being more dangerous, you know, you might find yourself trying this if you have to go on public transportation or in any kind of a situation that's particularly dangerous, I don't know, you decide. But um, if you want to um, increase the efficiency of your mask by anywhere between 15 and 50%, um, this is a really simple, easy, a little bit crazy, um, but effective trick, apparently. So I'm going to put the citation down below from Northeastern University and um, let me know what you guys think. So um, I, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a little bit warm. Um, I do think you need to be careful if you do this when you take it off because this is a biohazard just like the mask. Then um, you can put this over like a Sono mask or something that's profoundly antimicrobial. I would think because this is so thin that it's actually going to really cut down on um, any biohazard on it. But that, you know, that's not going to be studied. So I would just do what I have said all along, which is you wash your hands before you take it off. And then after you put it down, you wash your hands again. Um, let me just show you how quickly and easily that, yeah, these stretch a lot. So um, these can be washed in a delicates bag or by hand. I don't know how many times you're really going to be able to use this because it does stretch out considerably. Um, you can experiment with other sizes, but I just thought this was like so funny and I, I really had to walk the floors about deciding whether to do this on camera for you all, but it's, it's um, obviously such an effective trick. Um, that I just hated to, you know, not talk about it and not show it. So um, let me know how you like it. Let me know if you try it. And I'll come to you soon with those updates on some of the masks I already re reviewed, along with some masks that you guys have been asking me about um, with new reviews. Okay, so um, take care. Until next time, be well.